The following video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Visit yellowjacket.com to find out why Yellow Jacket is the industry standard in refrigerant hoses, tools, manifolds, and vacuum pumps, and many other tools. All right, guys, we are going on a no cool call in a trailer park that we take care of. Uh, I was told that this man boss man said that before we fix any or before I fix anything I have to call my boss man and tell him what the problem is so that he can call the guy that owns these trailers because he said if it's anything over a certain dollar amount he will not fix it he'll stick window units in the trailers so we got two trailers sitting side by side that we got to go see about. Both mile, units are down. Destination will be on the left. Both units are down, so we're gonna go troubleshoot them. Call the boss man, tell him what what each one needs, and we'll see if the guy wants to fix them. All right, our first one is the uh, horseshoe shaped ICP package unit. Looks like a four ton, which is way too big for this house. It was on a minute ago. I killed the disconnect. It was being delay. Looked like the blower and everything was turned. But if you look right there, we it's R22. We don't have no standing pressure. So he's, I'll call the boss. He's not going to want to fix this. Probably move on to the next trailer. All right, guys, the blower motor wasn't running. I couldn't film because one of the tenants was over here talking to me. We got some ice on the evaporator back there. That blower relay is bad. I uh, I didn't have any high voltage coming, but I had 24 volts at the blower relay, so I unhooked the speed tap wire right here. And I hooked well. I unhooked it from here and I hooked it directly to the contactor. And when I did that, the blower took off running. Now I'm putting it back on the blower relay where it belongs. There we go. Okay, I pulled it off there, put it on the contactor, it ran. And you can see the ice on the evaporator back there. It has hardly no Freon in it, so he's not he's probably not gonna want to fix this. But I'm going to uh, call the boss man, let him know, and then we'll move on to the next one next door right there. Alright, we're gonna hook the blower up directly back to the contactor to let it thaw the coil while I troubleshoot the next door neighbor. That way I can get an accurate reading on the refrigerant. All right, so I got the blower running. I just hooked it. I took it off the relay, and I hooked it straight to the transformer. I let it off that coil while I'm going to the shoot next door. All right, guys. This is the second house. It's another blower relay. I can't believe I've never seen two blower relays back to back like that. Somebody changed the potential family. It was not us. Look how they ran those waters. You know, that's that's dangerous. The sad part is he won't pay for me to fix it. So we're waiting to see if he's gonna give approval to change these blower relays. Alright guys, we're thawed out. I couldn't get no film on the other one because the tenant was standing right there with me, but I can get some film on this one. So basically what we did next door, and we're gonna do the same thing here. We took out this style blower relay and we're gonna go back with this one. That I've, this is so odd that I have two blower relays out right next door to each other. There it is up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it off and then we'll start hooking up the new wires to this one. Now you have to configure the wires a little different on this one versus this one. And we'll show y'all how to do that. Okay, it's mostly done. So, back here you have green and you have two commons. Those are your low voltage. Well, on the old one, you know, you have the double 
spades on the low voltage. Common comes from the transformer, gives you your common side of 24 volts, then it piggybacks off of here and goes to the contactor. So I had to add one of those gold, I call them piggyback spades. This red wire is coming from the sequencer. It plugs in right here and comes from back there on the sequencer. That is to throw the blower on it without a call for fan. Now on this one, it was done right here. The, uh, the black was here, the red was here, and the fan was here. So the way we're gonna have to do it now is these two pins are normally closed. So when there's no call for fan, these two are closed. So I've got another piggyback here. This is our fan tap that goes to the fan. And I'm gonna make up a piece of wire right here. And I'm gonna jump from here to here. Again, that's here to here. That way, if this red wire from the sequencer calls, it'll jump over and then jump to the fan and throw the fan on. And then this is what powers the fan here. When the, when the sequencer gets a signal for 24 volts, these two open at the bottom and the two top ones close throwing the fan on. So we'll finish wiring that up, show it to you again, mount it in place and run it. All right, there's our jumper from here to here. Everything else is the same. All I got left to do is hook this up right here to power the fan when the relay energizes, but I can't do that till I mount it because I don't have enough slack in the wire. All right, I turned our breaker on over there. There's also another breaker right here. There's the relay, all wired up. Yep, you know what? I didn't hook my damn wire up. I'm glad I double look. I'm double checked that. So. There it is. Okay. The blower motor should come on. Yep. There it is. You know, sometimes when you get these calls, especially side by side like that, it's like, damn. Two exact same units. Two blower relays. But that's damn sure what it was. All right, I'm gonna get this cover on and uh, recheck the refrigerant. You can see the water bubbling down there from where the evaporator thawed out. It's not frozen anymore. All right, guys, we're pulling out of here. This is not the uh, not your most fancy trailer park. Every single one of these has. The ICP horseshoe units, package units. Uh, some of them don't work because he didn't want to spend the money to repair them or replace them. So you'll see a lot of window units hanging out of some of these if it shows up on camera. You know, it's, I can't remember the last time I've had two units sitting next to each other, you know, right next door to each other with the same identical problem. Both of them with bad blower relays. And I'm not a particular fan of that ICP horseshoe unit. But, you know, it wasn't the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, I never installed them, so I don't know how easy they were to install. Uh, they're not the most service friendly thing in the world, but they are a workhorse and they would last. Uh, these are very old and they're, you know, they're still, a lot of them are still kicking. And as far as the blower relay, I use that one because that's what we stock on the truck. We don't stock those sequencer type blower relays. That's that's a that's the same one Goodman uses or used to use on their old air handlers. They have a time delay built in, and they're just not very good. They're they're very notorious for failing. So I just use I, I like that uh, single pole normally open, single pole normally close relay. They they're really good. They last. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all for watching another video. Uh, appreciate the support. And we'll see you guys on the next one.